Okay, so what I want to do is just uh, record uh, uh, essentially demonstration of the things I asked you to do this the, this morning, or things that you'll 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 start doing with your pair partner um, uh, after this session. Um, and the intention is to practice um, uh, this part here: looking at user stories, extracting a domain model, and then writing some tests and passing them according to those user stories. And the whole point uh, of TDD is making sure we're only writing code that meets the test and the tests are based on requirements. So we don't write anything else, any other extraneous uh, code uh, that's not aligned to a requirement. It's really tight, focused on the requirements and also clarifying, confirming what our expected behavior is before we start writing it. Um, and that's the, uh, that's the mindset part of TV, which is integral uh, to the way that we're going to be writing code here at Digital Futures, codifying expected behavior. Um, so uh, for this uh, uh, exercise, um, uh, I have set up um, um, uh, essentially a working directory uh, that's pretty much similar to that test framework that you were doing uh, yesterday. Um, uh, it has the, the same test framework, just a function that uh, compares two values. Um, uh, a file that's gonna run all my specs. I only have one spec at the moment, a basket spec. My basket spec, the moment is, is, is empty. I've got no specs in here, but it just requires, uh, uh, for the basket spec, it's gonna require my test framework. That's a comparison function. And then it's going to require my source code. Uh, currently, there's nothing in here. So this is uh, my sort of setup, my starter for my working directory. I've got here uh, the two use stories that we're going to try and convert into a domain model. I'll then use this domain model to write my first test, and then I'll be using my test to figure out what, what code I need to write. So if I have a look at um, uh, the first user story, um, uh, you might have come up with something uh, that um, is, uh, uh, and you can see on the right-hand side, the more formatted version of this. It looks a little bit of a mess on here. Don't worry about it. You can just look on the right-hand side. Lovely, lovely markdown. Um, and so we have an object. Uh, I'd like to add an item to my object. So if I'm adding an item to an object and I want to be able to continue to add them, my boss is going to need to have some kind of uh, 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 property, excuse me, um, and it's likely uh, you call it something like items, maybe, or you want to call it something like items. Um, I'm going to be as simple as I was like earlier this, this morning, and I'm not going to model item as its own object. I'm just going to keep it as, as a, um, a string. I'm going to just keep it super simple for the moment. Um, so my items is going to be an array. Uh, oh. Um, and there'll just be a bunch of strings in here, like I know uh, what's a what's a kind of bagel, an everything bagel, a cream cheese bagel, things like that. Um, then uh, my message specifically is going to be add. I'm going to write an add method. Uh, I want an argument here to be like a, a, the name of the uh, uh, bagel. This will be as a string, for example. Uh, uh, everything bagel or a cream cheese bagel. And the output is going to be the list of items. Um, uh, it's going to be something uh, uh, like this, All right? Quite straightforward. I'm specifically and intentionally putting a, a, an output here. And um, uh, there is an argument to be made that, you, that maybe you don't want to return anything specifically, you just want to add to the items. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to not go down that road. I'm going to make sure my method all the moments all my methods will be returning a value. Um, uh, and that's, that's important, explicitly returning a value. Um, so that's going to be the, the my, my first step here. Um, I have a basket, uh, has an add method, um, and it's going to store those strings in an array called items. So once I'm here, uh, for the first user story, uh, you could go on to model the second one if you wanted to. I'm going to stop there. I'll model it in a little bit later. We'll see maybe how my domain model changes if it does. Um, uh, I'm going to think about how do I use this um, uh, domain model to help me write my first test. Um, uh, so let's go to my basket spec. 
Um, and um, uh, let's let's remember uh, how I need to set this up. So um, I need to go through three phases: set up, I need to run some code, and then I need to verify what's happened. So for my setup, um, uh, because I'm using a basket class, um, I want to uh, maybe let's declare a basket up here. Um, I'm going to uh, create a new instance of my basket class. Um, and um, what code do I want to execute? Well, that's the that's the, what I'm trying to test here, my add method. So basket dot add um, cream cheese bagel. And then I need to verify that something's happened. So I'm going to use my assert equals method. Uh, assert equals um, uh, and, and, uh, and try and do something. But my assert equals needs two values to compare. I want to compare the result of this, my basket add. So let's make sure I store the value here. Uh, I'm going to make sure I keep um, uh, uh, declaring all the variables that I'm using at the top here. Uh, uh, results is going to store the, 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 the return value of my add method. Um, and then I'm going to compare uh, result. Now, given that result is going to be an array of items, how do I compare? How do I check that my array has the right things? Um, now, in JavaScript, comparing arrays is, is slightly more tricky because they're not values, they are references. So we have to check in, 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 a, in a, we can't just compare an array of equal to another array because an array in JavaScript, when we, when we uh, store in a variable, it doesn't actually store the value, it just stores um, information about, about where it is on your computer, you know, where it's stored in memory. So rather than actually do like a comparison, something like this, where it's like results should be, I don't know, uh, an array with that item, this won't work because even if they are the same thing, the evaluation of, uh, using the equality matcher won't work. So rather than this, let's let's um, let's check. Um, I guess there are a couple ways we can do this. Uh, we can check that the length uh, is specifically one. We could also check that it includes the value. Um, uh, the includes method is part of JavaScript uh, uh, array, um, and I could do something like this. And therefore, this is either to be true or false. So I want to make sure that it does uh, like this. That might be, might, that might be some, some way to, uh, to make sure it's working. Um, and then I want to uh, const.log the results so I can see it. Um, this might be my first, my first test uh, for the add method and um, making sure it's working as I want it to. Um, I'll run it in just a second to see where my failure is. My failure will likely be um, a basket, sorry, and what is it? Because I haven't written any source code yet. I'm just trying to imagine what my, what my, my program's going to do and how I'm going to test it. So I create my new basket, I run my function add, um, and then I assert on the results. I can't do a direct value comparison because we can't compare array values. We just compare um, uh, that it has the right properties, essentially. Uh, you could write some helper functions if you wanted to, to like loop through an array and check all the right values and, and be a little bit more in depth about this. There's definitely a, a higher degree of confidence we could get if we spend a little bit of time thinking about it. But I don't want to worry about it. I want to do like a simple, simple thing because the focus at the moment is just this process of test driving our, our programming, right? Um, okay, so let's um, uh, let's run uh, our, our, our test suite just by using the spec runner. Uh, our spec runner, if you remember, uh, just requires the basket spec. So the basket spec then then does all of this. It uh, requires my test framework, requires my source code, declares my variables, sets up my test, executes some code, and then logs the the, the result. So here we get basket is not a constructor. So let's go ahead and, uh, and make sure this is working. Um, so 
and let's go to uh, uh, oh, there's some notifications. Let's go to my basket uh, uh, file um, and let's create my class. Um, class uh, basket. Let's see if that solves this error. And um, I need to export it as well. Something I always forget. Cool. So now my error is saying that it doesn't know what add is because I haven't uh, 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 written it into my source code yet. So, so far, so good. We're on the right lines. It can see what basket is and knows it's a class because I've exported it. My spec requires it. And then I use it on line six. Then I also use my basket on line eight, saying I need to call the add function. At the moment, my source code doesn't have an add function, so it's not quite working yet. So whenever I see this, this error, I need to double check, is it a typo? Have I misspelled my, my function? If that's intentional, cool. So now let's define it. It's not a function, so let's define it. Um, add uh, item uh, is a, a method definition. It's got no uh, method, method body at the moment. Uh, let's make sure um, uh, that that's working. Cool. So again, I have written into my method body. So when I call uh, length on the result, my method, this doesn't return anything. So I call length on nothing and it throws an error. So let's make this work. My add method needs to add an item to an array. So in order for that to happen, I need an array. So let's make sure uh, my class has that property. Um, Let's initialize uh, the items property to, to equal an empty an empty array to begin with. Then our add item quite simply is going to do, um, it's going to uh, uh, push or insert into this array um, uh, uh, the item. Um, and then I want it to make sure it um, returns the array. All right, this is according to my diagram, my domain model over here. I want to always make sure my add method is returning the items. Cool. So far, so good. Uh, and I notice I'm always trying to run my tests just to make sure I'm getting a lot of feedback, quick feedback about the, what the work that I'm doing. I'm relying on my um, on my test suite to give me information about how far along I'm at to meeting my requirements. Um, now, uh, the, if we go back to the spec at the moment, this is quite a simple a simple assertion. There might be uh, more things that we could do to add like more confidence in the fact that it's working as expected. Um, I might want to try uh, using my add function like three or four times to make sure the right things are in there. Um, uh, because I could probably uh, change my functionality uh, and keep this test passing because all this test asserts that I always have to have an array of one and it has to have this um, uh, inside of it. So theoretically, I could actually still pass those tests I wrote just by doing something like Like this, this should still pass my tests. Yeah, and clearly that's not quite what I want. So something to keep in mind: your 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 test um, should help drive the development of your code. But sometimes uh, uh, um, uh, you need to add more tests to sort of guarantee that to have increased confidence. And it's not always. Um, there's a trade-off to make between like how much confidence you want and that's exactly as expected and how is it helping drive your development. Um, so I would probably say this, this is enough for the moment. And um, if you wanted to uh, have higher confidence, we can add another test. So um, let's, uh, let's do it again. Let's add another one. So it's a little bit clearer. Uh, notice I'm always creating a new basket for each test. I want to make sure I always start my test with a new instance of basket so I don't keep any leftover uh, state from my previous test. So always keep each test independent as much as possible. 
Um, so I create a new basket and um, maybe I want to add um, two items. Cream cheese bagel. Um, what's, what did, um, what did, was it Eugene? What did you say? Was it jerk bagel? Is that what you said? One of your favorite bagels? Someone else said it, no? Yeah, it was. Cool. Like that? Yep. Cool. So let's, let's, let's imagine we had um, a scenario like this. Therefore, I want to make sure, um, uh, let's say result two, we just have two, two outcomes here. And um, then I want, uh, when I do it for the second time, I want the length to be two. There should be now two items in it. Um, and um, that uh, it has both of the, uh, has both of these items. So that might give me even a higher degree of confidence than just having the one test. That if both of these tests work, I, uh, is what should work as expected. Um, so let's run the tests and have a look. Um, it, I now can't really make sense of this. So I'm gonna try and add a little bit more information about uh, each test uh, to make sure I understand what's going on. Uh, so let's say something like, um, Um, cool. So you can see that my, my adding two items uh, isn't working yet. Um, so let's go ahead and update my source code back to what it was before. Now that I've been able to see uh, it work a little bit better. Um, so if I remove this and bring this back, and then run those tests again, you can see I've got a little bit more confidence that the source code is working as expected now. All right. So just something to, to keep in mind, try and think about uh, 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 the tests you're writing, how useful are they? What do they force you to do? Um, and the idea of red, green, refactor is try and write a failing test and then write only the most minimal amount of code to make it pass, which forces you maybe to write better tests or more tests to cover different scenarios. Um, and then as a result, you can see that the, the equivalent of uh, the amount of code that I've written so far, notice I've written a lot more test code than source code. And this is quite more um, uh, uh, to, to happen. Uh, the amount of test code we'll, we're, we're writing will decrease um, when we sort of use frameworks to help us with our uh, or different third party libraries to help us with our test framework. At the moment, you're probably right a lot, a lot of test code, and that's entirely fine. Um, let's, um, uh, let's add one more um, uh, 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 one more one more part to our domain model. Um, so as a member of the public, so I can change what I'd like to remove an item. Um, so uh, I don't need to have any more objects. I don't need to have any more properties. Let's add a message. It's going to be what, this one here. Um, remove probably with the same identifier. Um, and then the output still will be the same. Just to, um, if I remove it, so I want to re remove and return the, the one that I, I removed. No, let's, let's, for the moment, let's keep the same. Um, there's, there's, there's a possibility here, depending on what you want to do, we don't really have any um, any other information to go on to make a choice whether I want to return the item that I've removed or the um, uh, array without that item, if that makes sense. So make a choice. Uh, and for this one, I've decided to keep it with the, 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 the array of items. So if that's added to my domain model now, let's see how I can convert that to a test so I'm going to go back to my spec. Uh, let's um, add another test. Um, so uh, can add two items. Let's can remove an item. I guess really, I want to the top here so I can quickly see what, what it is. 
change it, I'll change other ones later. So in order to remove an item, I actually still need to add an item. So this is going to go now into my setup. So I'm going to, as part of my setup, create a basket, add a bagel, and then uh, I'm going to execute my remove. And I'm going to remove this. And make it a little bit clearer so I can see. It's only have one result at the moment. So set up, create basket. I'm going to create, use my add function to remove um, uh, the cream cheese bagel. Um, and then I want to uh, assert on the results. Given that my remove method is returning the array, I can still do the same thing. I want my results uh, length just to be nothing because I want my array back to be empty. Um, and I want my, uh, um, uh, my array to not include uh, the cream cheese bagel which might make sense it already has a length of zero. You don't expect it to be in there, but it might be useful to already to still have that. So that might be good enough for the first sort of like uh, process to, sort of, to write my source code now. Uh, before I, um, uh, uh, oh, sorry, before I run this, uh, uh, before I write any source code, I want to run it to see that failing test. Um, so you can see here that I have my failing test uh, it says basket remove is not a function. So let's now go ahead. Uh, when we're at that stage, uh, we can now write some source code to make to resolve an error. So uh, let's write a remove function. Um, um, and uh, length is um, being called on undefined because my function remove doesn't return anything. So let's go ahead and, and solve this. So what do I need to do for my remove? I need to find the item in the array and then remove it and then return the array. I think the process of writing uh, comments or steps yourself inside of a method body is quite useful just to make sure you know specifically the steps you need to do and then you can convert that into code. It's a nice sort of uh, uh, conversion from not really knowing what the method should do to then breaking it down to small steps and then doing it. Um, so find the item in the array. Um, this items is my array. Uh, uh, I need to find uh, the index or whatever this is. Let's store that in a variable. Um, and then I'm going to remove it. Um, something like how splice work? Splice does something like from the index, and you want to remove one. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, after it's been removed, let's return the original array. Um, so this will be my first implementation of this of, of my remove method. Uh, I have a spec that covers it. Let's run it and, and see whether it works. Cool. So the first implementation works, which is good. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, can remove an item true. Um, and we could have more confidence in this by adding a couple more test cases if I wanted to. Um, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause there, I think. Um, what else can I talk about before we go into a Q&A? Um, anything important that I want to draw out? Um, it's likely that uh, the spec file is going to get quite long, um, and that's OK. Um, uh, for the moment, until we switch to using a third party library, try and organize it um, uh, as easy as possible um, and uh, make it readable so, so you can identify each test um, and make sure that you are uh, uh, creating a new instance of basket. Uh, essentially all your setup from scratch for each test that you're doing. Don't share state in between the test. Um, all right, let's, let's go to questions. So questions, folks. I can ask everyone's faces. What stood out to you? What, what, what did you find interesting? Um, uh, what, uh, uh, what was confusing? 
Sorry, do you know, uh, do, so all this uh, like pushing and to push into like an array and stuff like that, where do you get all these commands from? Just uh, is there just a JavaScript documentation or something? Yeah, exactly. So um, whenever, whenever you're um, trying to think about what to do, just first start off with it in here. I mean, this is literally what you can Google. Uh, throw that into Google and say, okay, how do I insert into into, item, into an array? Um, and then make sure you add JavaScript so that you're not using a different programming language. Really. The best documentation to use at the moment, uh, apart from Stack Overflow, you can use um, uh, the Node.js docs. Um, uh, so you can start here. Uh, and, uh, and and use these docs to search for uh, methods um, and things like that. Uh, so, the MDN docs and the Mozilla docs are quite useful as well. Uh, they're quite readable. Uh, so, I'll probably use the two of them uh, the MDN um, uh, uh, the documentation and the Node.js. Given that they both are using JavaScript, just remember that there might be some differences. Uh, given that this is um, a mostly browser JavaScript that you're reading. But most of it is uh, uh, um, the same. Does that help, Ramiro? Cool. If I'm confident using Jasmine, am I right to use that for the testing? Not yet. Than my, uh... Great, great that you're, you're, you will we'll, we'll switch to Jasmine next week. Okay. Um, I, I want you to just understand the elements of a test framework, which is why we're going through this. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, great stuff. If you want to use it on your own project, absolutely fine. Uh, but just for the moment, while we're using uh, global pairing and doing this work, and even for the weekend challenge, um, uh, please use this. As, as frustrating as it might, might seem. There is there is a, there is intention here. Cool. Anything else that you're that you want to talk about in this demonstration? No. Cool. Very straightforward. Understandable. We're all going to do the same thing uh, together in pairs in just a minute. Cool. Um, I'll upload this as well, so you can look, you can look, look back to it uh, uh, when you want. Um, I'm going to stop the share. I was going.